PCP, or Miss Llewellyn is no longer the PCP, and it has in fact not been the PCP since her 63rd is it birthday in September last year. There is a provision in the Constitution, I think it's section 96, subsection 2, that would validate her acts as DPP between then and now. But now that the ruling has been made, she can no longer um, hold herself out or perform functions as a DPP. And a new DPP, a new DPP should be appointed um, in accordance with the, the procedures which have been established for that. And somebody needs to be appointed to act as DPP in the interim. So what should happen come Monday then, following on from what you're saying? I would say that what should happen is that the, the Services Commission should recommend to the Governor General quickly to appoint somebody to act as DPP. And that's quite normal, happens frequently when an incoming DPP has to go on leave or whatever. That should be applied and done quickly. We've already received information about disruption in proceedings in a court in St. Anna already where the judge brought proceedings to a halt. Uh, to what extent, because the person representing the DPP's office, uh, she had concerns about them, I will just quickly uh, read what our correspondent sent here. Um, senior attorney, uh, now Oswe Smith, who was in the middle of a bail application, the trial judge said both him and the lead prosecutor, uh, they had to stand down because of the new development. To what extent are you concerned with the uncertainty that this now creates in the DPP's office? It's highly undesirable that there should be continuing uncertainty in the, in, in the DPP's office. Indeed, that uncertainty has, exi has existed from the legislation was brought to Parliament in July last year, and we pointed out why we thought it was invalid and unconstitutional, and the court has, in, has approved that and has um, upheld the submissions to that effect. And obviously, any continuing uncertainty is highly undesirable. The court system must continue to function. There are many, many cases in the system that need to be dealt with in, in accordance with proper procedures and due alacrity. And that is why I think that it's important that the Services Commission and the Governor General quickly appoint somebody to act. And there are very capable persons within the DPP's office, senior prosecutors, who can, who can act competently until a new DPP is appointed in accordance with the Constitution. What would you take as your views and also of the cases that the DPP would have been involved with since the expiration? As I've said before, I believe those are validated and those acts are validated by virtue of Section 96, subsection 2 of the Constitution, which specifically has that effect. Now that the court has ruled that the incumbent is not, is not the DPP and has not been since September last year, that it can no longer be applied to validate anything going forward, and a new person must be appointed to act until a new DPP is duly appointed. So in the period from the date on which her tenure really ended in September last year, and the ruling of the court today, I believe that those actions on her part would have been validated by the Constitution, Section 96, Subsection 2, and that's the advice we have received. You spoke about what the Services Commission needs to do. Mm -hmm. How about Ms. Slowly? What are you calling on her to do at this point? Well, my own view is that, you know, it is highly undesirable that somebody should hold office as DPP in this country, knowing that his or her tenure uh, is a matter of great concern to the opposition of the country. It is not a good thing for the office of the DPP to be in any way politically contentious. And I think that in light of today's ruling, uh, Ms. Llewellyn ought to stand down and should you know, not seek to make an effort um, to continue to hold that office in light of the ruling that the court has made today. You spoke about appointing a new DPP at this in the interim for the new DPP. Uh, what do you think the process should be? I know you mentioned earlier that it's supposed to be advertised, but if that is not done, then what? I believe that there's an established procedure as to how a, a DPP is appointed. I believe there may be some guidelines and so on, and we expect that those will be followed. Indeed, my understanding is that when an attempt was made early in 2023 for an extension to be granted, and that came before the Service Commission, and they pointed out that there was no possibility of it being further extended, they had indicated their intent to 
to proceed with advertising um, the position so that a new DCP could be appointed by September when the incumbent would no longer be in office. But that was, to some extent, um, superseded by this legislation that the government rushed to Parliament, which has now been struck down. Thank you. Follow on this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to start by placing on record my appreciation to our legal team. Yes. But that was 